Welcome to the Encore ENC1 Repair Guide. Encore ENC1s were made in Italy and they are a vintage guitar handmade. Now, if you want to take on one of these as a project, you will come across the issues of the fact that the action is incredibly high. But the actual materials made to use these guitars were very high quality, solid, very solid chunky rosewood fretboard and high quality feeding strings through on the very heavily built rosewood bridge. The challenge of taking on one of these guitars and making it playable was exactly the sort of thing I wanted to take on. I was told by many people that these guitars were virtually unplayable. In other words, once you got around the sort of 7th or 8th fret, it would really be um, virtually unplayable to your fingers. To a certain extent that is true as they come out of the factory, but with a little bit of work and a lot of patience you can make one of these into a beautiful sounding acoustic instrument perfect for singing on, on those winter nights when you want to play ballads. However, like anything that's worth doing, it's a challenge and I've set out what you need to make one of these guitars at For the Encore ENC repair guard, you will need the following. Firstly, you're going to have to adjust the truss rod, which is uh, on the headstock. I used a spanner. The moment I'm using an 8mm one, you could try a slightly smaller one, say 3 16th if you're using Imperial, okay? But you need to make sure that you use a little bit of oil, uh, or mineral oil, uh, or vegetable oil, some oil at the top there, or, or maybe even a little bit of WD. If that, if that truss rod is seized, you will ba basically snap and cause problems. And some people say you can put, put a little bit of water uh, into the wood around it as well, a few drops of water. Okay. The next thing you need is Spanish strings for your low E, your low A, and possibly your low D. And there's a good reason for that. I'll tell you that in a, in a later. Next, you'll need to cut paper clips to make um, a bridge for your low E string and your low A string. That's because I found out that you need to correct the intonation. That is because the actual on an Encore ENC1, although they've made some correction across the rosewood um, to fully correct the intonation for the bottom A string and E string, I had to cut using little wire cutters a little temporary bridge that rests across um, these the string guides here because the string the strings go through drilled holes at the bottom here and these are two Spanish strings that I've put on and that's a paper clip which has been bent slightly there and there one one piece one one piece cut from a paper clip resting on that side and on that side and basically the string length up to this is just over 65 centimeters this makes a correction for intonation this actual bridge I've got here is a Spanish bridge I took up the original and put a Spanish one in and I heavily sanded it underneath to bring the action right down. The bottom string, that's the E's, the, sorry, the top string here, the E and the B and the G, and then the D, I've had to cut deeply into the Spanish um, bridge here using uh, a Stanley knife, and all along I'm, I made cuts, deep cuts here. In order to, to make corrections so I could bring the action to make the guitar playable, I had to use a Dremel drill. There's my Dremel drill there and they come with, with diamond tipped uh, devices and also uh, other drill bits. You will find once you start drilling the string guides on an Encore ENC1 and I've drilled you can see along the, the, where, the, where the E string goes the B string goes and the G string goes and I've had to drill very deeply to allow this string, if I do a close up here I've had to drill very deeply to allow the string to go as low as possible as it travels out from there's the ball of the string there and it, and it travels very low and cuts deep into the Spanish bridge and then right really low down as low as I could possibly get it to go without any buzzing you, it can help sometimes if you put little shimmies in these holes as well which you can make out of say toothpicks and that will trap the string even better and I did slightly drill to make these to make the holes at the back of this guitar slightly um, 
come down lower to bring the action down as low as I possibly could. Removing the cover on the truss rod, which in these on the encore is at the top of um, the guitar here, it's a neck uh, adjustment here. I've got a little spanner here, and this is where you have to tighten. This is the there's a nut there. I'm using that's an eight millimeter, but you might want one slightly smaller. But make sure, of course, you have put some oil, drop some oil down on top of it first in case it has seized. And I managed to considerably tighten the neck. On these guitars, you will find the neck does bow anyway. So once you've actually adjusted the action, you'll find that the neck on an Encore ENC1 does not run truly straight. It, it starts, uh, even though I've, I've adjusted this to work correctly, it does bow up, and that's just how they are. It's never going to be flat. What I did discover about them is that the Encore ENC1 has a lot of similarities with Spanish guitars, but it's a very heavily built guitar, and inside very heavily braced. The bowl back is very substantial and very deep on an Encore ENC1, so therefore it's a very, very strongly resonant guitar. But as they came out of the factory, many people thought they were completely unplayable beyond, say, fifth fret or something. Rich rosewood. So these do require a lot of work on them, and I was prepared to give it a go to make this playable. And the result is you end up with a beautifully playable guitar, which is a hybrid of a Spanish and an acoustic. I suppose some people could try putting all Spanish strings on, um, I don't know how you get on with that. It would certainly help with reducing tension and make it more playable. But on mine, the Spanish are the bottom E, the A. The D string on that one is actually um, an old uh, G string, which phosphor bronze G string, again, to reduce tension to make the guitar fast and easy to play. Now, as for action, I managed, to, if you measure the action, say, from the top of the 12th fret, I managed to bring the action at the 12th fret down to about 6 to 7 millimetres if you measured it from the top of the um, fret on the 12th fret, which makes the guitar very playable for, for finger-picking back. Intonation with cut guitars is always a serious issue for those who play an acoustic instrument. So therefore, and I know my, my, someone else might come up with a better idea, but to break the bridge on the bottom in A strings here where you can see the paper clip was absolutely essential and the paper clip itself which is there the string is breaking on that it's not touching the bridge at all I did I did put string guides on top of this flat Spanish bridge and the idea of using Spanish strings on it came to me when I watched another video someone had said about putting uh, Spanish strings onto acoustic guitars if your guitar for instance has normal tuning pegs there is there is information about there how you can use old strings the little um, balls here on the end you can, they can be cut off and you can put uh, tie a knot in a Spanish put the string ball on the Spanish tie another knot on the side and then that can then be trapped where where a, a ball goes in where the string pegs go in so it's worth a try it, I'm not saying it will work but in this case with the Encore NC1 I realised that probably the Italian guitar makers who made this beautiful guitar were more used to making Spanish guitars because the Italians do make beautiful guitars. I have a very, very old um, Spanish style guitar made in Italy. I think it's made by a firm called Fratelli, which I picked up at uh, Flea Market Car Boot. And it was unplayable when I got it, but again, I worked hard on it and got it going again. Um, these guitars, because they're made of beautiful materials the actual workmanships and quality of the materials is very excellent it's just the fact they were just unplayable and with a bit of work you can make at the nut end of the guitar you may of course have to use a stanley knife to cut um, grooves for the strings if you overcompensate with the cutting uh, or as i did you got the cutting correct but you're still getting bars i tend to cut you can see one here on the nut there is resting there because I've taken the string off it. You can cut lengths of old string and just have them running along um, parallel to the nut. You can see there's one there and you can just shimmy them underneath and the strings will then go over that cut piece of string. And I experiment to try and get the action as low as I can so I've tried different old strings. Um, perhaps you might find a very old E string might work, a little, little slice going underneath the bottom A, a, uh, a and E string. 
and that way you can take buzz out the equation there's nothing perfect about this neck however it's very heavily built and, and the actual intonation and, and resonance harmonics on these guitars is beautiful the machine heads are heavily made and beautiful uh, so the equipment's all there it's just that it just wasn't all put together to make the guitar you know from a luthier's point of view playable and i'm not a luthier myself but i worked out with some hard work you could make this guitar beautiful for cutting guitar strings you'll need re decent um wire cutters and i'm i'm using these types here which are, sort of got a pincer cutter and there are plenty available on the market your spanish bridge will need to be sanded down to bring the action as low as possible and i've got i've had mine i've got mine resting here it it's it is not quite flush with the strings because i've got to allow them to break over the top of it but looking right down the guitar it's as you can see there you can see how deeply i had to cut into cut grooves into the spanish um bridge there just looking view this view along look at that view there this gives you an idea of how I had to cut into the bridge and the drilling that I had to do on the guitar I'll turn the guitar around and you'll be able to see this a bit better if I have it flat you can see how much those grooves do not exist in the guitar as you buy it that's how I've had to cut out the top E the B the G the D uh, le probably probably not required for the for the bottom a, E E and A, but certainly for the other strings, if you're going to use steel strings as I have. You're going to need to really bring the action right down. And there's plugs in there. I've just used like toothpicks, wooden toothpicks, broken them and and rammed them into the hole there with the strings to stop any fret buzz if you do get any. And basically, it's trial and error with old guitars but these beautiful old vintage guitars can be brought to life again and I just wanted to to let people know that obviously you know if you pick one up and it's too much for you then you know perhaps you have a friend or someone who might help you fix it up but it's always worth having a go at something yourself and that's the nut end there you can see I've had to f I've used the tiny tiny drill bits from my Dremel drawer or you can buy files um, you know on the usual online stores or in your guitar shop you can buy files to bring the nut grooves right down and it's just setting up a guitar so you like it making it playable as far as tuning goes i first started off with the encore enc1 and in drop tuning i.e i tuned it down so that instead of having e a d g b e i tuned it down to so had d g etc going down um, but I didn't really like it, I thought it should be full tuning. Now that I've adjusted this guitar so that it's actually got Spanish strings on the bottom E and the bottom A, you can put a Spanish on the on the D as well. Uh, I haven't at the moment because I've used a G string, from, uh, a phosphor bronze G string from a uh, steel string, which brings us, I've brought the string tension right down on, on you know the machine head side of it, and that's made this guitar beautifully resonant and beautifully playable and I will play it for you um, in a bit so as far as I'm concerned the only thing I need is I ordered a guitar strap and I, I use boot laces at either end with a guitar strap and the guitar did this guitar did come with um, the the you know the required ends to put to put uh, guitar straps on so as far as I can see a lot of these guitars were made and they do seem to crop up a lot and I got hold of mine because the person who had it basically just couldn't cope with playing with it and I don't blame him because it took me many 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 hours to get this guitar going but I thought it was worth it because I thought for, for such a guitar that was made so carefully it was a shame that they, that they were never set up um, to make them playable and that is one thing I would say to you when you do buy a second hand guitar if you don't want to go through this you know pain of making these things playable um, then make sure that your guitar is properly set up if you buy it from a shop or you choose a, ba a brand that people will tell you you can, can be played straight out of the box and go for the sort of you know the best you can if you do buy a vintage guitar be aware it may need a lot of work on it and although people might go buy brand on a vintage guitar if it's not playable 
the brand doesn't matter so much because you're going to have to spend a lot of time on getting it going. But for me, this particular project has been a steep learning curve. But I've learned so much about guitars and so much respect for the people who made this beautiful acoustic instrument that just needed someone to, to give it a helping hand to make it... Thank you. 